All right, so the uh, the project, I'm back in uh, CBDB, I'm in Visual Studio. The last where we left it off was we're starting to set up a system to um, capture the save comic information. If I try to save a comic, Iron Man number one, 1963, the save button doesn't save things yet, but the screen does not refresh, or should not refresh because of prevent default, but I do see the output that the function to save the comic is running. And at the least, we also see in the application in, in the developer console, um, I see in the index.db viewer that there is a pouch database and it's a database based on the currently logged in user, in my case, A at A. There's nothing in the database yet because we're not capturing those input fields yet. That's where we're at. So we're going to start to capture the input fields to then start to save the comics to the database. We have several things we need to think about. Remember, when we use PouchDB, we have to have a unique identifier, some sort of key that uniquely identifies every comic in the database. So the way we're going to do this is by using the name, the year, uh, and the number of the comic. That should identify every single kind of comic. Because throughout the history of comics, there has been more than one Batman number one, more than one Spider-Man number one. There was a brand new Spider-Man number one last month, if you didn't know. So there's been like five different Spider-Man number ones in the past 50 years. So we can identify those by the year. Spider-Man number one, 1963. Spider-Man number one, 1998. Spider-Man number one, 2018. So by taking um, the, all that information, we can create a unique underscore ID, a unique key in the database. Well, another thing we need to think about is there's comics that are named, for example, The Amazing Spider-Man, The Batman Adventures. Whenever you see a book in the library, if we were to go look up The Amazing Spider-Man, would we look it up under the T's or the A's? Usually the A. The T is omitted. T for the is one of those kinds of articles in a, in a sentence that is often omitted in alphabetization. So it would be Amazing Spider-Man, comma, the. So oftentimes, Titles that start with the, it alphabetizes by the second word. Are there any other words that, that are also kind of skipped sometimes for alphabetization? The Amazing Spider-Man, any other words? Of. Sometimes of is skipped. Anything else? Mm, possibly. There's also a, you know, a good journey or whatever. So there's some words, and we can define these. We're going to set ourselves up that there are going to be some words at the beginning of the title that we're going to skip for alphabetization. We don't want The Amazing Spider-Man to be under the same T as in Thor. We want A, Amazing Spider-Man in the A's. Um, we're not going to delete the word The. It's part of the title. But what I'm saying is, for organization, uh, we will omit, we will ignore certain parts of the name of the comic. So just to show you here, The Amazing Spider-Man, that would be an example where the, we're going to ignore that because it'll be something like that. That's what you often see when, it, when things are organized. Or, you know, uh, journey to nowhere, comma, a. Uh. You often don't uh, use the A also with organizing because all the A's would be grouped together and like that. So other words that we can use, we'll, we'll see. So that means we cannot simply capture uh, exactly the fields that are in the input form as is. If a person types here, the amazing Spider-Man, we will let them, of course. But internally, we need to take into account that it's a word that we don't need for al alphabetization. So um, what we're going to do then is start to capture the text in here and then uh, put it into our database. Question. 
so the word the is going to be one of the ones that we're going to um, sort of ignore. So that means we need to capture what they write and sort of process or prepare what they've typed in here. Uh, so let's get back to our code. Let's go to our <coughs> index.js. Let's go to our JavaScript. We will go over to our function where we start to save the comic, which is at approximately line 246. This function's purpose, based on its name, seems to be to save the comic to the database. Good. But we need to capture the data, process the data, then save the data. So actually, we're going to back up and create another function to prepare the data. Once the data is captured, prepared, then we'll save the data. So let's back up before that, and we will say, before saving the data, we'll capture it and prepare it. For example, omitting omitting certain what is, what is that word called like a participle or like what's it called in like grammar when you have the an article article i guess okay so omitting certain articles of a title so the amazing spider-man becomes amazing spider-man used for alphabetization alphabetization function fn prep comic So we're going to have a function that is concerned with preparing the data that we're about to capture, to strip out or to deal with the names of the comics. Maybe we want to also, maybe we don't want to save the dashes of the comic or, or whatever we want to do. We want to prepare the data before it's saved to the, <coughs> to the database. As usual, we'll have some console output here that says that this function is running. OK, so most of the time we create these functions, we create this code with a specific task. That's one of, one of many ways to program, of course. This, ta this function is for this specific task. Another way to program is to make functions that are a bit more universal in terms of, well, I could use this function to accomplish three different tasks, whereas clearly function save comic is only for one particular task of saving to the database. So here we're separating that the task of, separate, of saving to the database is one function. The task of preparing the comic is another function. And actually, we're going to do one more function. Uh, I want to create a function that its purpose is to uh, extract or, or check what the very first word of the title of the comic is. So even before we prepare the data, we're going to need one more function. So let's back up before that and say here, generic function uh, that checks or extracts the first word of the title of the comic or anything we input into it, but it's comics that we're dealing with. So this function purpose is to check, was the first word the Amazing Spider-Man? Was it a journey into mystery? Was it of mice and men? It's going to check what is the very first word. 
And there are comics that are simply one word, Hulk, let's say. So it'll check that. It'll say there is no extra first word, it's just one word title. A comic 1602, it's just 1602, but most comics, most books, most things have more than one word. I want to check what is the very first word of this comic. That will then determine, are we going to omit the word the, or are we going to save the comic as is? It doesn't have the, it doesn't have a, it doesn't have of, whatever. So function fn get first word. So this is a function that checks and extracts the first word of the title of the comic. Requires an input to process. Well, this function is going to be based on what we feed into it. Here's the name of the comic, process it, give me back the first word. So this has a parameter right here, str, requires an input, str or string. What, what is that title? What is the name of the book that we're putting into it? We're trying to get the person typed The Amazing Spider-Man. So The Amazing Spider-Man is going to be put into this function. It's going to be passed in here, string. It's going to come into the function for it to process it. This is an example here of, so the whole project, as I've said, I've taught this class for about five years. and. We used to do a different kind of project, then I've evolved it as time goes on, and I change things every once in a while, and I update the code, and I kind of see what's more efficient, or what's interesting, what makes sense, etc. Here's an example of something that I looked up, and I sort of borrowed as is. Someone figured out how to do this that I needed to do, and instead of me sort of like trying to put it together from scratch, I kind of looked it up and found examples of how to do this, and changed it a little bit for myself, and then I'm presenting it in the class. Uh, so what this is going to do is it's going to have an if else statement the purpose of this if else and of if else to check if the comic is a single word title or not. If the name of the comic is only one word, Hulk, we need to do something with that. Just return the name unprocessed. Or else it is a multi-word title, The Incredible Hulk. Okay, if it's multiple words, then, then we process it. What was the first word? The, or a, uh, or an. So here we're checking. First, if it's a single word comic or not. What we're checking here is str dot index of parentheses. OK, so str is what's holding the name of the comic they typed. It will know this a little later once we use the function. We're just setting up the function to use it a little later. But later on when we use it, uh, we'll capture what did they type in the title, and then we'll run this function so that it checks here. Let's see, what is the, what is the, the name of the comic typed? Let's check the index of, I'll explain that in a moment, quote, space quote. Make sure you have a space in between those quotes. Every other time we've done something with quotes, there was no space. This time there must be a space, because what this is checking, this is basically checking, when does the first empty space occur? So don't type this, but if I had the space amazing spider-man there is going to be a space that occurs so we're checking what is the index what is the value when does a space occur in the comics title in this case it's going to be 
0, 1, 2, 3. On the third position, there is going to be an empty space. If the name of the comic was something like My uh, Great Adventure, same thing here. There is an empty space right there. What's the index of it? Start, starting from 0, remember we count from 0 with, in most programming languages, 0, 1, 2. The first empty space occurs at, uh, at the second position. Well, if the comic is just called Hulk, there is no empty space anywhere. So the way we check if it doesn't exist is we then have space equals 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 negative 1. I don't know why it's negative 1. That's just the way it is. When the index of command was invented, they said, yeah, we will mean that it doesn't exist when it's a negative 1, which doesn't make sense. But it's a negative 1. So what this if is saying, if we do not detect an empty space in the title, do nothing to the title and just return it for further use. We'll put a little console output telling us that we hit this condition. This is a one word title. And we can say what it is via, <coughs> via str. Are we going to check to see if the first character is a blank in someone else? This is checking for an instance of the first blank. Um, you have a point there that a person could accidentally press a space first and then type the title. We will be able to process that a little bit later when we further massage the data. But this is mostly to check, is it a one word title of the comic? We will then say return str. Do nothing to the title, just return it. We're checking here. Where does the empty space occur? Usually it's going to be right after the first word. If it's a one word comic, then, um, then, it'll, um, then it'll say here, the console log will say, this is a one word title. Yes. Yeah, it, it won't matter. See if, if it's called Amazing Spider Man, that that space will occur here. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it doesn't matter when it occurs, it just is checking does does it occur? If it's Amazing Spider. Clearly, it's two words. There is a space, so it'll jump to here. It's not a single word. If it was just called, the comic was just called Amazing, then it would see that, okay, there, there's no space anywhere here, so it'll jump to this part. There's no, it's just a one word title, and it just returns it as is. So then the else is we did detect a multi-word title. So let's extract that word. This is not checking yet. Is it the? Is it a? Is it an? It's not detecting if it's any of our ignorable words. It's just detecting what is the first word of this multi-word title. In the, next, uh, in the next function, the prep comic, that's where it will then further prepare to say, oh, we detected it was the word to ignore, or not. Yes? Is it best practice to split, like, will it code by master, you split it up like this? Or if you say put it all together, you already put the word 
That's a good question. I'm not. Ex I don't exactly have uh, an answer. The, these functions are so small that it's probably <clears throat> negligible if there is a slowdown of multiple functions. We could combine this all, the save comic, prep comic, get first word. We could combine that all into one function. I don't know honestly which would be faster. Um, for one point or the other, when a function runs, it has to you know scan everything about it. So all of that will load into memory. If we divide it up into multiple functions, we only need to run a certain function at a certain time, so it would be less in memory at that moment. And then if you had a function broke, then it would just be Yeah, so that might be also a faster way to debug. If one particular function is having problems, we could focus in on what's wrong with that function. And since it might be less code overall, we might find the errors easier. Okay, so in the else part, we did detect a multi-word um, comic, so we will say console log this is a multi-word title. We will say well what what was it? The, what's the whole title? Furthermore. Here's where, we, here's where we do the extracting. We're going to return again, and return you know, kicks it back to the rest of the program. Because within the world of this function, we use the data, and then we want to kick it back, return it back to elsewhere. So we return it back to the main program. But instead of just returning it as is, uh, we need to only extract uh, the very first word. So we're going to say str dot um, sub str, that's short for substring. Actually, does it pop up here? Uh, form number length get, gets a substring beginning at the specified location and having the specified length uh, from the starting position of the desired substring, the index of the first character. OK, so the substring command, we can note it right here, sub str, substring returns or extracts part of a word from a starting point, some sort of number. When we count in computers, what's our first number? Zero. zero. So from some starting point, which often is zero, starting from a starting point to a length number. So. In the parentheses, we're going to have 0, comma. In the example of the amazing, we would have 0, 1, 2, 3. <clears throat> we would say, uh, let's extract starting from the 0th position, going three positions right here, 0, 1, 2, 3. We would extract the word the from the main title. Let's grab the first three letters. That's basically what this is saying. Let's grab the first three letters and return them. So it'll return the word the. But if the title is an amazing Spider-Man, now it's from zero to two, isn't it? And what about for whatever reason we don't we want to keep track of the word where? Well now that one is five. So this value, there must be some way to know what that is. It changes every time, right? We can know that because of this. Give me the index. Tell me when the very first empty space is. So we're going to copy this from on top over there, this part right here. Yeah, that ran out, so just uh, So let's copy that string part. Yeah. If the command is already given up there, why does it have to be told that zero has to be the value to look for at the beginning? Is it uh, because it has to start counting from zero? Yes, exactly. Um, it doesn't have to start counting from zero, but we usually want to start to count to zero from zero because here, from when we're counting with computers, we always start at zero, and in this case, I want to count zero, one, two, three, four, five. We could set it to start at 1, 
So it's going to skip that first one. It's going to go five more spaces. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So you, yes, usually we put a 0 here, start from the first word, and then count out five spaces. Well, um, it just seems redundant because it's like a repetitive command. If you're already telling, telling it up there, why does the computer have to know it at the bottom? Because you already told it up there. Well, are you saying this versus this? Right. No, it's not repetitive at all here. Uh, it's doing two different things. We use the index of up here to check is the, is the comic title a single word or not. So the purpose of it at the beginning is to check, is it one word or more? Then we use the command over here uh, to determine how far to go, starting from zero, going some amount of characters, and this will tell us how many, two characters, 12 characters, whatever. So they have two purposes, one to detect, and then like one to apply it. <clears throat> so we copied that. But we can do here also, um, just to give ourselves more output, uh, usually when I'm, so obviously I have the complete code, I know where it's going. If I were programming this app from the beginning myself, I would be commenting and consoling output a lot to myself to figure it out. That's what I did when I developed this app. Uh, a while ago, I was doing a lot of console output to figure out, is it doing what it, what, I, what it should do? As I said, you don't need to have every single command memorized of every language, but you need to uh, practice it, you need to look it up, you need to expand upon what you've already learned. So I'm going to give myself some console output here to tell me, well, what is this word that we detected that is the first word? Uh, we can say the first word is... We can copy all of this. All of this basically is checking what is the first word. We're returning it to use it, but here I want to put it in the console, so you can copy all of that and paste it here, except the semicolon, of course. We're going to say the first word is, and then this long thing is <coughs> the first word. <coughs> put it right there. So we will see multiple closing parentheses right here, because each one has a purpose. The very last one is for log, the second one is for substring, and the last one is for index of. So yes, there should be three closing <coughs> parentheses at the end of that line. Okay, so all of this was to define a function that its purpose is to extract the first word of a multi-word title. Or, if it's a single word title, just kick back that single word title. We won't be able to test it just yet, because we're not using the function yet. We're defining it, but we're not using it yet. You know what? I guess we could test it. We could do this just to confirm. Function get first word, and we'll, we'll put in a word here. Let's say the amazing Spider-Man. Well, I guess console. Uh, never mind. It's going to be too much trouble because we have to then put it in a variable and then put it into the console. Yeah, never mind. We'll check it when we uh, actually do it. Okay, so we're going to use this function in the prep comic.
in the prep comic function down here. So we'll get back to our prep comic. Okay, so in prep comic, create variables to store all the data in the input fields. Create local scope variables. So variables that only exist while this function is running. The memory is freed up after the function stops running. VAR dollar val in title is equal to the jQuery selector quotes pound in title. Remember in the HTML we have these input fields. One of them is in title. That's where they type the title of the comic. So we're saying Let's get the value of what the person typed in there. So further, dot val, parentheses, comma. Let's get the value of what was typed into the input field, and we'll store it in this variable. I ended that with a comma, because I need to do that for all the input fields. Comma, enter, tab, dollar val in number is equal to dollar jQuery selector quotes pound in number the value therein comma and then for the year for the publisher and for the notes dollar val in year equal to jQuery selector quotes pound in year dot val I'm going to do it again, comma. Now, there's only one var, because we're, we're creating a variable one time, comma, and another time, comma, and another time. Don't put var, 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 because that comma will break things. We'll put var, semicolon, end of statement. Then we can do var, semicolon, end of statement. And another bar. It's just another way to do the same thing. This is slightly more efficient because it um, only uses one command, var, one time. Although it is confusing, perhaps, if you don't notice that you have commas at the end instead of semicolons. And then lastly, for the moment, val in. Notes. We call it note or notes. Probably notes, but let me triple check here. In note. In notes. Yes. Plural. So dollar pound in notes dot val. And here I will end the statement. All of this is one long statement that could have been on one long line. I broke it into multiple lines for readability. Then it's the final semicolon there because we've ended the statement var. It was on multiple lines, but it was one statement. I'm going to add a note to do to remind us. Also, create variables for the barcode and photo. We're not there yet.
Okay, so next what we'll do here, create temporary variables to deal with the title of the comic. Of our temp ID one is equal to something, comma, temp ID two is equal to something else, and temp ID three is equal to something else. The something else will be that temp ID one will store only the first word of the comic, uppercase. Temp ID two will store the whole title unaltered, uppercase. Well, I guess just altered besides uppercase, uncut, we'll say. Un unabridged. And then temp ID 3, new version of the title without the or, uh, or you know, whatever word we, we determined. The ignorable par article, article, what did we say it was? Article? No, no, but I mean, what was the what was the term for that for the word the and uh, article? Yeah. So the new version of the title without that article of the title. So this is very common that. The user is going to type something in, and it's going to magically happen. Well, it's not magic, because we have to program it. We have to think of the possibilities and the contingencies and set up the data how we need it to be, to put it into our database, to organize it, to retrieve it, etc. So as a user, again, we just press a button. It's so easy, but we have to do all the hard work. And the thing is that this is where, this is where problems happen, not just syntax errors, which are a lot easier to, a lot easier to fix. You know, if I accidentally typed that right there, I have val, 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 and I'm getting an error. Whoops, that's a number one, not an L. That's a syntax problem. That's a syntax issue. The code is wrong. That's easy to fix. A logic problem is, or a logic problem is much harder to fix. Like, logically, this is supposed to check. Is it greater than this or less than this? There's no problem if you put greater than or less than syntactically, but there is logically. So the logic errors are the often the harder ones to figure out than just misspelled command. Question? Um, I forget if you addressed it before, so sorry. Um, do you have to convert everything to capitalization to uppercase? So for that, um, so that can get confused because is it case sensitive? This is case sensitive, yes, capital letter A and lowercase a are technically different. Mm -hmm. So that might cause problems when we need to organize, <clears throat> alphabetize, and so forth, or compare things. So it is often a good practice to force it all uppercase or lowercase so that it's all consistent. We can save a copy of it unaltered and a copy of it altered, so in case we need to use either one. But it's often good to have the uppercase version just to uh, streamline possible po problems with comparisons and if case matters. Mm -hmm. Are we going to do that? Or? Yes, we're going to do that right here. Uh, these little placeholders here is where we're going to actually do these things. Yes. So uh, these placeholders, what we actually want to write here is, uh, first of all here, function get first word. We're going to use the function we invented a little earlier. We're going to pass into it the title of the comic. So what goes in the parentheses? Val in title. Dollar val in title. 
So up here, we're saying, let's go get the value of the input field where they type the title. Let's store it right there. Okay, let's get that. Let's try to get the first word of that. Well, here's the part where we turn it uppercase. Inside the parentheses, dot to uppercase parentheses. So capture the title, turn it into uppercase, check what the first word is, store the first word in here. So the only thing that this is storing is the first word of the comic in uppercase. And there are two parentheses closing here, so make sure you've got to two. The unabridged version of the title in capital letters goes in temp2, which is val in title dot two uppercase parentheses. It's a method, it's a command, so make sure you put parentheses here. So this is storing the whole title without any words omitted. Yes, in uppercase, to store into our database temporarily so that we can compare and do stuff. This third one here, we don't we don't know what it is yet because we need to do some more massaging <clears throat> some more massaging of the data so that'll just be empty for the moment. Quotes with no space this time. So remember, space is not nothing. A space is an invisible character. So make sure there's nothing there. Now that means nothing. This variable has the first word in uppercase. This variable has the whole title in uppercase. This variable is empty for the moment. Next, we'll say conditional statement. Switch to check for the existence exists, existence of our ignore ignorable. Is that a word? Ignorable word. Is ignorable word a real word? Sure. We're going to check for the word that we're going to ignore. A or the or of whatever we choose via a conditional statement. If we hit the condition of the word the, let's ignore the. If we hit the condition of the word a, uh, let's ignore a. Uh. But that's not saying every instance of the word a uh in the title. The Amazing Spider-Man in a Strange Place is not going to hit that second uh. We're only caring about the first word, because we're saying here, the first word. And so a switch statement, I think we've used it at least once before, which, is, which goes like this, switch, parentheses, curly brace. I'm going to break those curly braces apart. Note that this is the end of our switch. Check for ignorable word words.
Okay, so further the way a switch works is that we have a case. A certain case, colon, do something, and then we break. There might be another case. And we break. Here's where we list the possibilities. Here's where we list the possibilities what of, of what words are we are we gonna are we gonna ignore? And since we can't list every possibility, we have a final default possibility. In case the word is the, do something. In case the word is a, do something else. In case the word is of, do something else. If it's none of those, okay, great. Then we're not going to do that extra, those extra alterations. We hit default. We probably leave the, the title of the comic alone as is. Z is a placeholder. Yes, but uh, it's a placeholder. So what we're doing inside of the switch, what we are using to to check our condition is temp id1. Temp id1 up here stores the first word of the comic, whether it is a multi-word comic or a single word comic. If it's the Incredible Hulk, in theory, it's storing the. If the comic is called Hulk, it's just storing Hulk. So in the switch here, we're saying what, let's check, what, what is that first word? In case of it being the, this is the, I'm doing this in uh, all capital letters because remember, up here we turned it into all capital letters. This is one of the reasons for the two uppercase, because if I wrote here the, it, that's not gonna, it's not going to hit it. Uppercase capital T is different than lowercase capital T. So to alleviate all possible problems and nuance, we did it all uppercase up on that previous line, and then here we're checking it for uppercase. In the placeholder here, we're saying comic has the in the title. Let me say the name of the comic. Temp ID 2. That's the one that's unaltered. It'll be a repetitive here. Case of a console will say comic has a in the title, temp2. For example, of. In the case of of, the comic has of in the title. So in quotes here, a. Uh, I'm just going to copy that, paste it. The comic has a. Uh, in the title. Let's say, uh, you know, th this is robust enough that it could be checking for co comics in different languages. Like, let's say it's a Spanish comic, so oftentimes El, you know, El Hombre Araña. That's the same as The Amazing Spider-Man. El is The. So I could do that in there. I could say El. The comic has L in the title. Any case that we want here, as many cases as we want, we just add more before the final default. The default should always be the last one. Making a note over here. Pro tip. In a conditional statement, So a switch or an if else or whatever. Try putting the most likely result first. So it's <clears throat> more efficient. 
It has to process less. I'm not going to expect to find comics with the title L very often, so it's down over here. I'm going to often expect to find comics with the, so it's one of the first ones. I don't know if the or a uh is more common. Maybe we could look it up. But the point is that it'll check here, and it's a. Uh. It checks here. It's not a, uh, so skip it. Go here. It's a. Uh, stop. So trying to put the most likely result of an if-else statement or a switch statement first can often be more efficient code because it has to process less code. Is it this? Nope. Next. Is it this? Nope. Next. Is it this? Yes. We're done. I had to process two cases that weren't it, so we can try to put the most common one first. In the default, the comic has none of these in the title. Well, um, we can't quite test it yet. We still haven't attached this, these functions to the button yet. They're still just existing. We'll check that in a moment. Question? Double uh, semicolons. Oh, yes. Thank you for that. When I did the copy and paste, I already had a semicolon, so I kept it. Yeah, that would have been an error because it would have been a, an empty line. OK, so let's take a break here. Um, after the break, we will um, further make sure that this works and then attach it to the button. It's not attached to the button yet. 6.50-ish, we'll come back at 7, and then we'll go on.